right, good to see everybody here this evening. Let's all stand, if you will, please. Take your songbooks and turn to page number 288. 288, I am resolved. 288, I heard from Brother Cotton that last night the men went out and Brother Jeremy out ate everybody when they came in the ice cream. Is that right? He ate, out ate Brother Rick. Well, that's a miracle there. Yeah. Put you to shame. 288 tonight. We'll sing the first and last verse of I Am Resolved. I am resolved. the world's delight. Things that are higher. Things that are fair. My sight. Sing it now. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for loving us. What a joy it is tonight to be in the midst of your people with your book tonight. And what the Bible does say, we're two or more together, together in your name. You'll be in the midst of us tonight. Without you, it's in vain. Lord, we need you tonight. Please speak to our hearts tonight as we open the word of God. Lord, this is not man's words in this Bible. This is God's words. Lord, you can give us something tonight that we can take to be better servants for you. Lord, be with our country, be with the ones that are sick tonight, be with those that are in need tonight in a special way of a miracle. Lord, there's several in our church that are hurting tonight that nobody else knows about but you. There's needs that they have tonight that are so torn on our bodies and their minds tonight they can't get it off. But Lord, I pray to understand this. The Bible says that we'll cast all our cares upon you, for you care for us. Lord, please, tonight, help us to glean from your book, from your spirit tonight, an imitation time that will obey you so we can be better Christians for you. Because one day we'll see you face to face and give an account for what we do for you. Help us tonight, please. You know my pray. Amen. All right, page 120. Five, the solid rock will sing the first and the last. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. alone for us to stand before the throne on Christ's solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand amen you may be seated all righty spring revival may 5th through the 8th at 7 o'clock the guest preacher will be uh, Brother Gomez, and a bunch of birthdays, Jennifer Bailey, Donna uh, Turner had a birthday, Jerry Rogers, D, Miss D, there's Miss D, you feel any older? No, okay, good. <laughs> and today, Carly, are you here? Do you have a birthday today? Can we sing happy birthday to you because you're here? Would that be okay? Okay, can we sing happy birthday Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. If you show 
up at church on your birthday, you ought to have it be sang to you specially. So, and then Tre uh, Trevor Smallwood has a birthday on the fifth, and this week's memory verse is Romans four and verse twenty. Romans four and verse twenty. Chris, would you give pray for the offering, please? All right, everybody will stand and open your Bibles to Psalm 51. Kids and teachers can be dismissed. Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Let's read uh, verses 10 and 11. And let's read those together. Psalms 51 and verse 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Lord, I was thinking about our Sunday service. What a great service we had. Many visitors and and the reason is because we were out working, but now's no time to stop. Uh, Lord, help us still to be about your business, guide and direct us. Lord, help us to be soul conscious, help us to continue to be inviting and handing out tracts. Be their pastor tonight and speak through him, give him the words to say, give us the ears to hear and help us to apply this message to our life. I pray these things in your name. Amen. You may be seated.
take your Bible, go to Psalm 51 tonight, please. Psalm 51. Psalm 51, you there say amen. amen. This psalm was written by David when Nathan, the man of God, come to him after committing adultery with Bathsheba. And it's amazing to me tonight as Nathan had to go to David and remind David what he did. The preacher always gets the, I don't know how to say it, preachers always get the, the, the people look, look down on the preacher for speaking the truth and calling out and seeing what it is. And if you're sinning tonight and I'm aware of it and I think it's, you know, and if I think I need to come to you, I'm going to come to you. And whether you get your feelings hurt or not, sorry, truth still truth. And, uh, and you know, listen to me, folks, sin still sin. Don't get quiet on me tonight. We're all sin in this room. And you can try to act like that you're super spiritual, whatever you may be tonight. But listen to me, those folks will find out one day sin will cost you more than you want to pay. And sin needs to be called out. That's the problem with our churches today. Preachers have stopped preaching on sin. Amen. Preachers have stopped preaching on sin, and people stop blushing when it comes to sin. It used to bother you when you sinned, by the way. I said it used to bother you when you sinned. Now it's just another day. What's one more sin, preacher, to my account? Listen to me, folks. David found out <clears throat> that uh, it cost him a whole lot more than he wanted to pay. Matter of fact, it, it won't just cost you. Look up here. It also could cost your children down the road. David had a son do something very awful. Be sure your sin will find you out. You can try to cover it up all you want to. You can try to blame everybody else for it. But listen to me. Hey, your sin one day will show what you really are. And the man of God, Nathan, was not backing down from David, even though David was the king. Huh. The man of God still said, hey, you done messed up. By the way, thus saith the Lord anyhow. Amen, church. Y'all okay tonight? You came to get something. I think you came to get in, I hope. Amen, not to get out. And Nathan said, hey, David. I don't care if you're king or not. I don't care who you are. You have sinned against God. And it ain't between the preacher and you and God. It ain't between nobody else and you and God. It's between you and God. And you might want to go to God and get this thing right before God takes care of you. Amen, church. So listen, hey, you, see, you play with sin long enough, it'll ruin your life quick. Thank you, Brother Archer. We, we, we get all uh, nervous when preacher preaches on sin and finances both. But when it comes to this thing of sin, we want to we wanna just, well, well, preacher, my sins aren't that big. Listen to me, overeating is still just as bad a sin as murdering somebody tonight. Amen. We want to we wanna put sin on a different pedestal here. Well, this is, the, this is the okay sins, and this is not so bad, and this is real, real bad. In God's eyes, all sin still sin. Somebody say amen. For all have sinned. I mean, I get an introduction tonight, praise God. Look, you're looking pale already. I know it's Wednesday night, but I was like, listen to me. David had did something terrible. No doubt <laughs> he had committed adultery with Bathsheba and murdering her husband, Uriah, in 2 Samuel 11, verse number uh, 1 through 12, chapter 12, verse number 15. That's what chapter 51 was written. And that during that time when David had messed up and David had uh, Bathsheba's husband killed at the line of duty, May, hey, he may not have actually had the sword that killed Uriah. He may not have had the gun that killed Uriah, but he, had, he made it happen, which still makes him the murderer. And then on top of that, uh, Bathsheba got pregnant, no doubt, and God allowed that baby to die. By the way, I said God allowed that. It's what God, God, God's in control of everything, by the way. Amen, church. You know why? Because he didn't want that baby growing up in a messed, in a messed up home anyhow. Amen. That baby's in heaven today. Amen, church. Go ahead, abortionists. You kill these babies, but let me remind you of this. God's got them all in heaven taking care of all of them. Amen. Every aborted baby that's been killed today is in heaven with Jesus Christ being bottle-fed by him, praise God, if that's the case. Amen. I'll never be for abortion. If you are, something's wrong with you anyhow. That's free, by the way. That didn't cost you nothing tonight. 
Still murder, by the way. I said it's still murder, by the way. Come on now. See, you want to say amen about that. Something wrong somewhere, church. Abortion is still murder. Well, preacher, you got to be diplomatic. Look here. It's still murder in God's eyes. And those doctors are going to pay for it one day anyhow. I don't know why I got on that, but it's just amen, church. You're going to find David <clears throat> awful thing he did. No doubt about it tonight. I like what David did here. We'll jump into this. Y'all okay tonight? You nervous yet? Good. You'll get nervous in a minute, I hope. Because sin ought to make you nervous. Really, sin, listen to me, we've, we've adapted to sin way too much. We've allowed our TVs to cuss in front of us. We've allowed our radios to cuss in front of us. Let me go ahead and take you a step further because, uh, I mean, we all want to do it. We let this thing of American Idol and voice and all that kind of stuff, the worldly music come into our houses. Uh-oh. We've allowed this stuff on Facebook and Instagram and so forth and so on. And this thing of sin has been rampant and nobody wants to say a word anymore. And the ones that do, everybody wants to jump on their case and say, ha, 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 what are you doing? Who do you think you are? Listen to me. Hey, the Bible does say to call out sin by name. Show my people their what? Their sins. And you won't find Nathan did it to David. I'm glad Nathan did it because it's in, in, it's in the word of God what Nathan did. And, and it actually caused David to examine his own. Listen to me. When a man of God throws something at you that, that maybe you're doing wrong, instead of you getting mad and bowing up and leaving and going to everybody else and saying, that preacher, he, 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 he's got my number. No, I don't got your number. God's got your number. God will use a messenger any day to speak to you. Amen, church. Y'all okay? You're looking kind of rough tonight. I'll wear back and preach tonight instead of doing Bible study. Amen. This thing, hey, David, David shows us here how we can get confessed, how we can get, we can mess up big time and have bad things happen in our life. Then we can turn around and go to God and say, God, I'm confessing it full fledged. I'm giving you all. Forgive me. I don't deserve to be forgiven. But if you'll give me a chance, and God turn it all the way around. Amen, church. Same God tonight. Notice tonight that as we get into this, David does not try to bargain with God tonight. He doesn't go to God based upon some good he's done to try to cover up the bad he's did. He's done, excuse me tonight. You're going to find David just goes out there and lays it all to God at God's feet and says, hey, God, I'm going to give it to you. And what you decide to do is you're God anyhow. You'll do what you want. Amen. I'm going to find, <clears throat> y'all still with me? Look at this outline quickly, then I'll give you some things tonight to think about. Hopefully, if we get time, look, look at the outline here. Number one, verse one and two, you're going to find, or verse one through 12, excuse me. Verse one through 12, I'll break this down as well. Verse one through 12 is David's plea. David's plea, verse one through 12. Look at verse number one. Have what, church? Have mercy upon me. O oh God. According to that loving kindness, I like how David does it here. David goes to God and says, hey, God, have mercy on me. I, I know you're a loving, kinding, a loving kindness God. Let's remind God, hey, God, I know how you can get wax hot as you did in the, back in the days of, uh, in, in the Old Testament. But, Lord, I'm coming to you. I need your loving kindness. I need your mercy. Look at it. According to the multitude of thy tender mercies. What you say? Blot out my what, church? Come on now. Blot out what? My transgressions. Look at this verse number one and two in this chapter here of David's plea. You're going to feel David appeals to God's love and mercy. First thing David does is he's going to confess to God and ask God to forgive him and to wash his transgressions clean. And just a minute, you'll find that as we read our verse 10 about creating me a clean heart. But before he does, God uh, appeals to God. He appeal, David appeals to God for his love and his mercy. Can I say it to you tonight, look, whether you like it or not, if it wasn't for God's love and mercy, nobody in this room tonight would be here. Look up here. Let me shock you again. If it wasn't for the love of God and the mercy of God, nobody in this room would be here tonight. Nobody in this room would be here. We're just here because of the love of God and mercy of God. Amen, church. 
You're going to find David pleased and appeals to God's love and mercy. In verse 1 and 2, he, he's asking God to have that loving kindness and that mercy that we all deserve tonight. We all, we all deserve, we all need tonight. When we mess up and when we sin and when we come short, we need the mercy of God. Somebody say amen right there tonight. I'm thankful tonight that when I do crazy, ignorant things in my own life tonight that I've got the mercy of God. Amen, church. Do I deserve it? Do you deserve it tonight? You ought to thank the Lord that he still allows it tonight. Amen. You're going to find his, uh, he pleads mercy according to God's loving kindness. He implores forgiveness according to God's tender mercies. In verse number 2, look at it. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He don't not only just he's trying to tell, you know, as we do sometimes with our prayer, here's what we say, Lord, I'm sorry I sinned. Please forgive me. David's, David's going way, way above that. David's telling the Lord, hey, Lord, I not only want you to confess it I, I, and forgive me, I want you to cleanse me. I want you to take that scrub brush, that scrub brush, sort of speaking. I, I know it's going to hurt. I know it's going to be rough. But, Lord, I, I want to be so clean with you, I don't want this sin to mess me up anymore. We'll get to that in just a minute, what sin can do and what sin does to an individual before we confess it to the Lord. Because this means the devil is well known for destroying Christians with sin. What's your Bible say about the devil? He comes to, seek and, uh, he comes to devour, right? Walketh about seeking whom he may what, church? That is not the lost. He already has the lost. That is the saved. How's he going to destroy? How's he going to devour the, the saved people with this thing of S-I-N tonight? Sin. I want to say it to you this way tonight. Listen to me carefully because you, some of you say, you ain't talking to me preacher tonight. I'm talking to everybody in this room, including this preacher tonight. We have gotten so adapted to this thing of sin. Like I said before, we'll sit in front of a TV. It didn't cuss all day long. It won't bother us a bit. We'll watch pornography on TV. Not, you know, well, preacher, they're not naked. They're just undressing. No, that's just as, I'm sorry. I don't know what, what you think is sin, but that's sin. Amen, church. The Bible says you shouldn't look at something in the, anyways. Uh, but he, uh, hey, David was at home take, uh, uh, and went on the roof, and this girl wasn't, wasn't, wasn't being a model. She was taking a bath in her own house. Some of them and I, she wasn't trying to flaunt her stuff. She was, she was doing what she does at home. David's the one looking for something. Some of them and I, you remember, hey, look here. You want to find sin, it'll find you. Don't worry tonight. Remember, you used to have HBO and Cinemax to get pornography. Now you turn on the commercials. Some of them and I, commercials are sickening, by the way. They're talking about some things that I don't even want to know about. Some of them and I, I mean, sickening, Brother Smith, commercials. On regular TV, moms and dads, you had to sue your brain for non-support to put your kids in front of a TV without being there to, 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 to watch over it before they see something they shouldn't see. Somebody and I, but I mean, I get in the message tonight. Listen, we, 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 have, we have gotten just, uh, I don't know what it is. We've stuck our head in the sand, I guess. You know, like an ostrich. Was it ostrich do that? No. Okay. That hurt. I can't do that again. I'm getting too old for that kind of stuff. <laughs> we just stuck our head in the sand. We, don't, we have no... We, we, well, preacher, you're just exaggerating. Listen to me. This world's in a mess she's in because of sin. This hatred, what causes hatred? Sin. This thing of sin, and David, David's trying to get with God, and he ain't worried about nobody else tonight. He's worried about himself. He says, look, God, i got to have you. i got to have you to wash me and you to clean me. A priest can't wash you. Uh, uh, your, your, your best friend can't wash you of sin. You can confess all you want to to your peers and your friends, but the only way I can cleanse you tonight is Jesus Christ and him alone tonight. David understands the conditions he's in, and he's asking for the mercy of God and the loving kindness of God. His confession of sinful conduct, verses 3 and 4, look at it, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin, look at this, is ever before me. 
I want you to look at that word there, for I acknowledge my transgression. Listen to me. David wasn't scared to mention it by name. Preacher, I can't tell God what I've done. I got bad news for you. He already knows. But preacher, how embarrassing is it if I tell him how embarrassing it was that he saw you? And David says, I, David says, I acknowledge. David wasn't scared. How would you like to go to God and say, hey, God, uh, I had an affair. I had somebody murdered uh, uh, and I tried to cover it up. I mean, how in the world do you want to go to God and acknowledge that? So I'm having I. David's like, hey, God, I'm so embarrassed. And by the way, you ought to be embarrassed when you sin against God. Boy, it's getting quiet now. Well, preacher, I said a, I said a slang word, but it's not a cuss word, but it's a slang word. What's the difference? Woo. Look up here. Put your cell phones up. It's preaching time. Hey, Amen. You play with phones in church and so forth, so on. You know what you're doing in church? You're sitting in church. Woo. Hey, listen, this, this thing of sin, don't get mad at the message. Now, listen to me. This thing of sin is getting out of hand where we can, we can just do what you want to do and nobody's going to say nothing to me and I'm just going to get by with it. Be careful, sir, ma'am. God sees everything. Preacher, you mad tonight? No, I'm not mad. I'm just, I, I am mad. I'm mad at sin tonight. Because sin has destroyed so many Christians that it could be Good for God, amen. But we don't acknowledge it anymore. It don't bother us anymore. What's the big deal? So and so is worse than I am any day of the week. We ain't looking at so and so, we're looking at you tonight. Amen. We can all we can look here. I'm gonna shock you tonight. We can all we can make all of us look good with somebody else tonight if we want to. Well, if you compare me to Brother Rick, I'm not as bad as Brother Rick is. We know that tonight. <laughs> well, that'd be Brother Jimmy for out eating you an ice cream, though, wouldn't it? That, that was a sin of overeating, wouldn't it? Wouldn't you say, Brother Rick? Over sugar, over sugar, high blood pressure. What else does ice cream do? Who said fat? Thank you, Ms. Rogers. Fat. What else does ice cream do? Oh, whatever, forget it. Moving on. <laughs> I can't pull out that scene too much. I don't know nothing about it because I don't eat that much ice cream. But anyways, moving on. You're going to find this to me. David acknowledged it. Everybody okay tonight? Let me just ask you this point question tonight. When's the last time you went to God and said, hey, God, today I did this, I did that, I did this. See, it would just take, for, it'd take for a long time, wouldn't it, but Don? I mean, it would. I overslept this morning. I did, truly. Sorry. <laughs> See, I can confess my sins. Be all right. Everybody okay? David acknowledged it. Here's what, here's, what, here's, here's what David didn't do. Well, God, it's because of Brother Tibbs that I did it. It's Brother Tibbs' fault. It's his fault, God. Hey, God, it was his. He made me do it. Did David do that? Somebody have a night. Come on now. But aren't we good at that? When we mess up, well, you know, so-and-so calls me to do it. Well, so-and-so there? Well, so-and-so told me I should, really. So so-and-so jumped off the bridge. You want to jump with them? Somebody help me tonight. Well, I wanted to fit right in with the group. Listen to me. We ain't trying to fit in with the group. We're trying to fit in with God tonight, so to speak. Amen, church. Y'all okay? Smile. I am still in an induction tonight. David Learn what it was to acknowledge it. Look at verse number four. I like this. Against what, church? Talk to me. Against thee, the only, have I sinned. Now, wait a minute. Didn't he sin with Bathsheba? Somebody help me. Didn't he, didn't he sin against that family, period? Somebody help me. Then he sinned against the kingdom, basically, as a king. Somebody help me tonight. Was he worried about that? Uh-uh. He's worried about one person, God. 
Look at it. Hey, Lord, only one I sinned against that I'm concerned about, period, is you. I know I hurt others. I know I've caused a lot of damage, but, Lord, I can't fix that, but I've got to fix it somehow with you. And David cries out and says, Lord, I have sinned against you, and you only have I sinned. And done, look at this, and done this what, church? Talk to me now. Talk to me now. I've done this what? Evil in thy sight. Man, look at that tonight. David was willing to even call himself evil. You're talking about humble Talking about pride, swallowing your pride a little bit to go to God and call yourself evil. Amen, church. Look, you need to quit going to God and saying, well, God, you know what? According to so-and-so, I ain't so bad, but I'm going I'm to get your forgiveness tonight. And that ain't it, but Dre. God against you, and you only have I sinned against and done this evil in thy sight. Wait a minute. He knew, that, he knew God had already saw it. So help me. God can God God God's God's everywhere, right? God sees everything, right? So how can we try to hide it? Oh, preacher, I got my cell phone and I got it locked up. Ain't nobody gonna see it but me. Woo! Nobody's gonna know what I'm doing. Got bad news, sir, ma'am. God knows. Not even the FBI preacher can find my passcode to get on my secret stuff. God already knows. Somebody help me tonight. Let me help you out, sir, ma'am. Be sure your sins will find you out. You can fake it till you make it all you want to, but God's going to eventually show you what you really are. Everybody okay? Breathe, it'll help you tonight. David says, I acknowledge it. I understand it. And not only do I acknowledge it, and my sins are ever before me. By the way, I'm going to tell you this right now. Sin will stay with you. What David say? It's ever before me. Every time David looks in that mirror, you know what he thinks about? Man, I messed up. David, confession of sinful conduct, verse 3 and 4, moving on quickly tonight. His acknowledgement of God's desire, verse 5 and 6. His acknowledgement of God's desire, verse 5 and 6. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We understand tonight that when we were created, we were all created sinners. So help me tonight. When we were born, we came out sinning because we came out screaming. Most of us did, amen. <laughs> and those babies, Miss Archer has Harper back there. Not, yeah, not Harper. Tanner. It's been a long day, folks. Sorry. Tanner can't talk, but I guarantee it. Tanner still sins. You know why? Every time he's hungry, he screams. Right, Miss Kelsey. Every time his diapers, different things going on there. He starts making noises. We, we, listen, we, we, can, we, we, we can't get out of it, folks. From day one, we've sinned. So I'm having night. From day one. What they used to say, is it terrible twos or, is that right? Terrible twos. Then they get to be teenagers and became brats. Is that right? Something having happened. All right. When they become... Well, never mind, moving on. Now, of course, I know one of his grandkids are perfect. That's what you think anyhow, but still in your family, so they ain't perfect too much. Anyways, moving on. You're going to find, hey, everybody okay? Baby's sin from day one. Somebody help me tonight. They throw their fits. Take them to Walmart, and they want this toy, and you tell them no. It's like you tell them that you're going to kill them or something. They throw a fit. Somebody help me. Play dead weight. I did that once with my mom, and I won't tell you the aftermath. I won't do it again, though, because that hurt. But okay, David says, hey, Lord, I understand where I come from. I've been born in iniquity. By the way, that does not excuse what you do today. The 
Verse number six, behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. That's God's desire when it comes to this thing of sin. You're going to find tonight, number next, quickly, his prayer for forgiveness and restoration, verse 7 through 12. This is all part of his plea with God. His prayer for forgiveness and restoration, verse number 7, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. By the way, uh, that's not soap and water. What can wash away my sins? Verse number eight, make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Again, as we said in other chapters before, David's body is hurting because of this thing of sin. And sin will make you hurt, even your bones hurt, even your body to hurt because sin not only causes pain on the outside, it causes pain on the inside. I could imagine every time David got around a baby and a baby would cry or he would see a baby, David would automatically have hurt that he had a baby that died because of his sin. So help me not. Every time he hears that baby cry, he's reminded of what happened with his sin. Every time, Brother Dre. It would hurt not only on the outside, it would hurt the entire inside of his body. So we don't understand tonight, not only does the sin hurt between you and God, it also hurts on the inside of what you're trying to do. I don't want to get ahead of myself. It's the inner, that'll be hopefully at the end tonight. I'll try to help us with what sin does quickly tonight. Moving on, David's promise. David's promise, not only David's plea, verse 1 through 12. David's promise, verse 13 through 17, quickly to teach others, verse number 13. Look at this, <clears throat> verse number 13. Then will I teach transgressors the, thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. David's not asking for forgiveness just so he can feel good about himself. Watch this tonight. Listen to me carefully. Look up here. David's not just asking for forgiveness so he can just get out of the guilt. David's asking for forgiveness and cleanliness so he can go tell somebody else not to do the things that he did and so he can win people to the Lord. That's a very powerful statement there in verse number 13. David wanted to use his sin not to glorify himself, but to glorify what God can do and that God can forgive like nobody else and God can also turn those transgressors around and God can save anybody in their sins no matter how deep they are in their sins. Very powerful statement there in verse number 13. We want to go to God sometimes and say, God, I need you to forgive me because this guilt's about to kill me. Wait a minute. Guilt's, guilt, guilt, guilt hurts, no doubt, but listen to me. It goes beyond that. You got to want forgiveness so you can tell somebody else how that God can forgive you. God can also forgive them tonight. You understand tonight? We're, we're talking about David still today on this one sin that he did that's awful, but we're still talking about this today, and this story has changed people's lives even today. Why? Because that was David's heart. David wasn't trying to impress God. David wasn't trying to make himself look good. David was trying to get back with God so he can help somebody else give the gospel to another lost person before it's too late. You're going to find he wanted to offer praise, verse 14 through 17. Take time to read that tonight. When God forgave him, as verse number 10 said, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. David wanted to praise the Lord. By the way, tonight, when God forgives us of every sin, we got to take time to praise the Lord tonight. Then you're going to find David's prayer, verses 18 and 19. David's prayer for Zion and Jerusalem, verse number 18. And David's prayer to be pleased of the Lord, verse number 19. Look at it. And then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. David goes beyond just himself. David understands as a king, especially tonight, 
his sin has not only hurt himself, it's hurt his whole entire nation that he's the king over. Let me remind you tonight, you think you can sin and get by with it by yourself? You can't because your sin not only will affect you, your sin will affect others that are around you. See, it goes beyond this. We don't talk about it, and Bible doesn't talk a lot about it. But I wonder where David's wife was at this time. How did she feel? Somebody help me tonight. How did Bathsheba feel after all this is over? Husband's dead. Baby's dead. David's back with his family. All by herself. Hurt. Pain. All because of her sin. And David's sin. She, she could have told David when he came over there, hey, look here, I'm married. You need to get out of here or I'll push you out of here. By the way, David's, David's sin, but John said, but she was just as guilty as David is. Two wrongs never make a right. Two wrongs never make a right, sir, ma'am. Whole life's messed up because of sin. We think we can get by with it. Well, mine ain't that big a deal, preacher. Just a little cuss word here and there, just a little rock music here and there, country music. See, preacher, country music is better than rock and roll. Listen to me, knucklehead. It's all sin. Let me take you a step further. Christian rock is just as bad as rock and roll. <whistles> Christian country is just as bad as uh, country music. Somebody help me tonight. It's contemporary. Look up here tonight. I'm talking to you. The contemporary music is just as bad as, as anything else. Amen. Well, they put the Lord's name in it. And the world music with it. Sounds real good, amen. So let's take Budweiser, put Christ's name on it, make it and it'd be okay. That's okay. Some help me tonight. Don't get quiet on me tonight. Some hey, amen, amen, preacher. Amen. We want to justify it tonight. Woo! Get quiet. I said we want to justify it tonight. Well, preacher, what I'm wearing is not what the world wears. Be careful. Amen. Be sure your sins will find you out. Y'all okay? Preacher, how dare you? Listen to me, folks. Truth still truth. I can mention, I can go a lot deeper tonight if I wanted to. Amen. We've justified it. That's why we have churches that are full of people. Look here. We have churches full of people. Full of people. Got the band up front, got the, got, 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 got the praise and worship bands, and they're playing their drums and their guitars, and they're waving their hands, praising the Lord. You know what God says? It makes him sick. Amen. Makes God sick. It's called lukewarm Christianity. They couldn't find God with the FBI. Everybody okay? I know people leave here and go to places like that. Hey, listen to me. They'll answer to God for it one day too. Somebody help me tonight. Preacher, what's wrong with you? Hey, last time I checked, this is an independent fundamental King James, Bar King James Baptist Church. Amen, church. If this kind of preaching bothers you, you're at the wrong place tonight. Amen. You're at the wrong place tonight. This preaching bothers you tonight. It's still sin. And we justify it. Well, it's got the Lord's name in it. And, you know, preacher, it's okay to worship God with the world. My Bible says to come out from a Monday and be ye separate, thus saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. Preacher, you back in the 1950s. You need to grow up a little bit and get back in the 2024. My Bible hadn't changed, neither is God. And sin's still sin. Everybody okay? Look here, don't bow your head. Ain't time to pray yet tonight. It's Wednesday night, Bible study night, preacher. Yeah, I hope this is a crowd that can take it. Sunday morning crowd can't take it with the visitors. Amen, church. Hopefully you can take it tonight. If you can't, something wrong somewhere tonight. It's called meat. You can't stay on the milk forever. Somebody help me tonight. You can't stay on the milk forever, church. 
David said, here, look here, I have sinned against God, I have messed up, I, have, I should have been at battle, not watching on a rooftop, watching a lady take a bath. I messed up by being idle, first of all, and foremost, not reading that Bible, not obeying God, not being where I'm supposed to be, and I messed up. Now I need God to cleanse me and to forgive me so I can move on in life. Well, preacher, you ain't talking to me tonight. Careful, sir, I am talking to you tonight, and ma'am, I'm talking to you as well tonight. Ooh, we've got about four minutes left, or five minutes left. Let me give you this quickly tonight. Y'all okay? Y'all okay tonight? Breathe. Breathe. It's okay. Let me tell you what David, <clears throat> these are what we need to do tonight. Let me, see what tell you, let me tell you what David, what sin will do. Watch this. Sin soils the saints. Sin soils the saints. Verse number two, David's begging God to wash him thoroughly. Cleanse me. David's saying, cleanse me. Why? Because my sin has saturated me. My sin has soaked me where I can't stand it. It's made me dirty. Wouldn't you love to go out tonight and roll around in a, grave, in, a, in a gravel parking lot for a minute? Wouldn't it be great? Somebody help me. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wet and muddy, gravel all over you. Help me out tonight. What, what, what would it feel like? Someone help me. Someone help me. It hurt. Not only that, what would it feel like? Dirty, gringy. Someone help me. Weigh you down a little bit, right? Someone help me tonight. Put your Bibles up. Any Bibles today? Look up here. David says, Look, Lord, this sin has soaked me. I feel I, my whole body is soaked with it. So I'm having night. Number two, quickly. Sin saturates the mind. Watch this. Not only does it saturate the body, it saturates the mind. Remind you quickly tonight, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Let me help you tonight. Just to think about sin, just as bad as doing the sin. Well, I'll tell you what, preacher. If I could give them a piece of my mind, I... You've already done it anyhow. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. I'll never murder nobody, but I think about it sometimes. Just as bad. Somebody help me tonight. I ain't never gossiped to somebody's face, but I tell them behind their back. Somebody help me tonight. Saturates the mind. Miss Freddie, we wonder why people can take guns and kill their whole family. Because sin saturates their mind. That's how. How can husbands and wives and moms and dads take their kids and drive them off in a river? Because sin saturates their mind, that's how. How can preachers blow their brains out? Because they allow sin of people, of other people even to it, saturate their minds, that's how. Moms and dads, you understand tonight when your kid messes up, some have a night. Your kids go drinking, your kids, whatever may do, destroy their marriage, whatever your kids may do, even as parents, you know what happens? That's their sin saturates your own mind as well. Help me out, parents. And if you ain't careful, it can destroy you. It ain't even your sin. See, we forget tonight. Look at me. It ain't just, well, I, I did it. I shouldn't have done it. I'm sorry. It goes way beyond that. We're still talking about David's sin 2,000 plus years later. I think I'm right. Maybe not on time anymore, but oh well. Sounds good. Y'all stay with me quickly. Sin stings the conscience. As I said a while ago, David not only hurt himself big time, but he hurt a lot of people in this fall. I even wonder tonight if this sin of David 
cause Amnon to have a friend that he shouldn't have. Some help me tonight. Amnon raped his own sister. <whistles> Who's daddy? David. Could his own sin cause his son to do something so terrible? We forget tonight, you may get by with it, you think, with your own sin in your own life, but your kids may reap it down the road. See, we don't think about it this way tonight. You may be, you may be thankful tonight, you've got a preacher to tell you the truth. And not worry about opinions tonight, because I don't care what your opinions are. Sin is still sin tonight. It stings the conscience. I got a lot more to say with this stuff, but I'm just going to give you this. Number next, let me just give you this quickly. It saddens your heart. David lost his joy. David lost his heart. Verse number 12 Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. David so burned down with hurt. And agony and pain of this sin. It's taken his joy, it's taken his heart. Listen to me, folks. Why are Christians so miserable tonight? Why do you look around in church and everybody's frowning and everybody's like they, they've lost their best friend tonight? I'm going to tell you why. Because sin's taking over in your life. I, I can't understand why you come to church and the songs are sung and the preacher preaches to you the truth of the Word of God and you can't swallow your pride and say amen and smile on your face and, and enjoy the things of God. When it comes to congregational singing, stand up with a songbook and open it up and let her rip. By the way, when there's prayer time in church, you, are, you might want to start shutting your eyes, still looking around. Because to me, hey, folks, it's, me. it's called respecting the house of God. But you know why? Because you had no joy. You're miserable. You know why? Because there's sin in your life. That's why. You come to try. You come to try. You come to come to church trying to make your conscience feel better. Listen to me, church ain't gonna make your conscience feel better. God can. That's the only one that can tonight. Everybody okay? Look here. This is hard to preach tonight. You know why? We all have a sin problem tonight. Look up here. Ain't time yet. But Donald, the verse tonight. Sorry, it's more important tonight than a verse. I'm having tonight. It's truth. Sin sickens the body. As David said in verse number 8, I'm sorry, verse number, <clears throat> yeah, verse number 8, thou hast broken, no, that the bones which thou hast broken, there we go, I'll get it in a minute. Sin sickens the body. It causes physical hurt. Number next, sin sours the spirit. The backslider in sin will be cankerous, critical, sour, judgmental. You know, when you throw a rock at the pack of dogs and the one that comes out yepping is the one that got hit. Somebody help me tonight. When you throw a rock at the pack of dogs, but red, the one that comes out yepping is the one that got hit. Chris said barking, I guess, but I called yipping. And why? Because he got hurt. Tonight, this, this ought to hurt everybody in this room tonight. Somebody help me tonight. Come on now. Don't sit there and be like, well, you ain't talking to me. I guess you're perfect then. My fault. We all have a problem tonight. It's called sin. It's what we do with it that's going to matter. Somebody help me tonight. Y'all fumbling around in your Bibles and I look at you. You can always tell when, when the guilty is when they're there because they, they'll be fidgeting. As the Bible talks about, David said, uh, my, 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 my spirit is sour. I'm, 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 I'm critical. I'm sour. I'm judgmental. I gotta, no, no, the problem is not everybody else. The problem is you. Say it again. Look up here. The problem ain't anybody else. The problem is you. Say it again. The problem ain't anybody else. The problem is you. Before you can criticize the government, before you criticize everybody else doing wrong, you might want to make sure that you ain't doing wrong. Amen, amen, preacher. 
Sin seals the lips. I'll give you this and I'm done tonight. David was saying, I've overstepped my bounds. I'm crooked. I've missed the mark. Lord, I'm going to confess it so you can create in me a clean heart. Confession is simply this, going to God and, as David did, acknowledging what you did and begging God to forgive you and cleanse you. By the way, watch this, with the right motive with that. As I said, David wanted to cleanse him as clarity so he can help somebody else and win somebody else to the Lord Jesus Christ, not so he can feel better about himself. Somebody help me tonight. What David's goal was, as a, as a king, as a leader, he knew that he had to get right with the right attitude so he could help somebody else not to do the dumb thing he just did. A church member told about a sin he had committed. It's not this church, a different church. Years ago, in which he had confessed and for which he had received forgiveness from the Lord, he said that during World War II, he had owned a corner grocery store and sugar was hard to get. Was that true? Ms. Rogers says, yeah. Anybody else is around here, World War II? No? Okay, just checking. <laughs> he devised a scheme whereby he could make more money from the sugar sales. Kind of clever here, watch this. He decided to buy sugar in 100-pound bags rather than prepackaged amounts uh, such as one- or five-pound packages. He then weighed out the sugar himself in one-pound bags, but he said... I did not give 16 ounces to the pound. I put 14 ounces in the bags and marked the packages 16 ounces. It took me about all day to weigh out 100 pounds of sugar in 14-ounce bags. I was sure the customer would not know the difference. However, that night I could not sleep. I tossed and turned all night thinking about my dishonesty. And my sin. Finally, I got up, knelt beside my bed, and confessed to God my sin. Now, listen to me, folks. We're talking about sugar. We're talking about just stealing some sugar tonight. Well, that ain't no big deal, preacher. With God, it's all a big deal tonight. Confessed to God my sin and then went to the store and spent the next day adding three ounces of sugar to each bag. I put three ounces in to make 17 ounces because I wanted to make sure I slept night the next night. Where are you at tonight? There ain't a soul in this room tonight that shouldn't come to the altar before God himself tonight and acknowledge some sin that you're still holding on to tonight. I don't care who you think you are tonight. Everybody in this room is guilty. Whether it's a sin you did today, yesterday, last week, last month, last year, or 50 years from here does not matter if it ain't been confessed and dealt with right it still got you down and out and it's taking your joy it's hurt your body it's saturated your mind and listen to me it eventually will destroy you if you ain't careful tonight and this may be the very last chance you get to get with God and get it right I didn't say get with the preacher. I don't want to know. I don't need to know. God already knows. If we confess it, he's faithful and just. Watch this. To forgive us, period. No. And to cleanse us, David said, wash me thoroughly. 
Father, bless the invitation tonight, please. Thank you for this great chapter as David brought up sin in his own life and dealt with it the right way. Help us tonight across this room to be willing to admit like David and get it right before it's too late tonight. Stand to our feet, music plays. Should I say it? Should I say it tonight? Sir, ma'am, should I say it? Come on. Come on. Sin, folks. Sin, folks. <laughs>